This lecture continues the lecture on the method of undetermined coefficients. And in this lecture, we we'll talked about the second case of the non-homogeneous part, which is uh, the function g of t equals to uh, a polynomial functions and multiply by an exponential function. So p of n of t, again, is a polynomial functions of uh, nth degree, and e to the alpha t is an exponential function. In this case, the non-homogeneous part, g of t, will be the uh, products of these two types of functions. All right, so if the non-homogeneous part is in this type, then the solution for this non-homogeneous part is going to be big Y of T equals to T to the S um, polynomial functions of nth degree with undetermined coefficients, A0, A1 to AN, and multiply by the exponential function E to the alpha T. It's the same as the E to the alpha T that we found in the non-homogeneous part. And again, how can we determine the value for S here? So S in this case is a number of times alpha is a root of corresponding homogeneous equation. Okay, in this case, S is a number of times that alpha is a root of the corresponding homogeneous equation. All right, and the reason why we have T of S is we want to have, um, we want to ensure that no term in this solution is a solution to the corresponding homogeneous equations. So if it is, then we have to raise um, the T by a unit. Okay. All right. Well, let's look at um, an example. So we have at this case, in this case, we have a differential equation, second order constant coefficients. And keep in mind that the G of T this is the function g of t. And the function g of t has two parts. One is um, a functions, right, in terms of a polynomial functions multiplied by an exponential function. And another function, it is a polynomial functions. So that means we, in, when we try to find big Y of T, we need to find two different functions, one corresponding to this functions and another one will correspond to this function. Okay, keep in mind. Now, again, the first st step is we always wanna find the characteristic polynomial of the not homogeneous equation. So it's gonna be R squared minus two or R minus three equals to zero. And then you can find R by factoring um, this equation into one equals to zero. So then R equals to negative three and R equals to, no, R equals to positive three and R equals to negative one. All right. So now uh, we want to look at, so let, let me call this is like G of T and this is like H of T, let's say, okay. So then I have for g of t equals to negative three t e to the negative three. And in this case, alpha is actually negative one. And you can see that alpha is negative one and alpha is the same as one of the root of the characteristic polynomial. And it only has one root as negative one. That means at this point, we know that S equals to one because alpha is a number of times, S is a number of times, alpha is a root and in the root of the characteristic polynomial only has one root of negative one. Okay. So we determine the value of S, then the big, I will call big Y one of T, of this g of t is going to be, um, and then you have this is the polynomial functions of the first degree. So 
combine all of this together, I will have a specific solution for this non-homogeneous part. So it's going to be a t to the s, which is t, to the 1, which is just t, right? And then multiply by polynomial function with undetermined coefficients, which is and with first degree, so I just have a zero t plus a one multiply by e to the alpha t and alpha is negative one just to the negative t. So this is the particular solution, specific solution for this non-homogeneous part. Now let's go to h of t. h of t is 4t. And if we look at the characteristic polynomial, there's no zero root. If there's no zero root, no zero root, then s equals to zero. Okay. When you have just a polynomial function, you want to look at zero as a root in the characteristic polynomial. If there's no zero as a root, then s equal to zero. If s equal to zero, that means a specific solution for this non-homogeneous part would just be simple, right? Just a polynomial functions. And I want to um, call b zero t plus b one, because I don't want to re, uh, repeat the variable a zero and a one. So I call it b zero and b one for the second part of the non-homogeneous. Uh, Part. Okay, so now as we remember that in order to find the uh, specific solution to the whole entire non homogeneous part here, we need to combine these two together. Combine this function and this function together. So then y, big Y of t equals to y1t plus y2t plus, because you have a plus here and it's going to be equals to t a zero t plus a one e to the negative t plus b zero t plus b one. Okay. Well, at this point, we found we found a functions for the specific solution. And the functions is in this form right here. And our goal is we just want to uh, determine what is a0, what is a1, what is b0, what is b1 by again finding the first derivative of this gas solution, right? And the first derivative will be so first I want to multiply this in together so to have. Um, a t squared plus uh, a one t, right? And then I can uh, erase this. Okay. Well, we'll have two a zero t plus a one multiplied to e to the negative t, and then add to the ne derivative of this e to the negative t should be negative e to the negative t and multiply to a zero t squared plus a one t. Okay, and then the derivative of this should be b zero. Okay. Before I move to the second derivative, I want to simplify this a little bit more. So I have e of negative t and e of negative t is a common term. So I have, I factor it out. So then what left over should be a 2a0 t. Um, and then over here I have negative. So first I want to call, I want to collect, maybe collect a t squared form first. So the t squared would be negative a0 t squared. Okay. And then now I move to the t term. So I have 2a0 minus a1 plus t 2a0 zero minus a one. Okay. And then I move on to the uh, constant term. So the constant terms, I have a one. 
So these are all the terms that connect with e to the negative t. And the v0 will be just v0. So now I can find, try to find y double prime. Okay. And again, I just need to use product rule in the derivative. So the first is I want to find this derivative of this function um, and then keep this function. So it's going to be e to the negative t, negative 2a0 t plus 2a0 minus a1. This is going to be 0 and this is going to be 0. Okay. Plus uh, the derivative of e to the ne negative t is negative e to the negative t and then multiply by just this polynomial. And again, the derivative of b0, which is b0. So now I already found y, y prime and y double prime. Maybe I want to, so then now I need to replace y, y prime and y double prime into this original equation to, to determine other non uh, undetermined coefficients. Before I want to do that, again, I want to uh, simplify this y double prime first. So again, e to the negative t and e to the negative t is a common factor. Okay. Um, so I have, so now I'm going to collect t square. So there's only one terms of t square. I have negative, negative a0, so it's positive a0 t square. Okay. Now I want to collect the term t, so it should be here. So I have 2a0, and remember you have a negative here. So I want to have plus t first. Here I have negative 2a0 and negative 2a0, so negative 3a0. How about a1? I have negative and negative, which is positive a1. Okay, so this is the term t, and how about the constant? So I have 2a0, a1, negative a1, and positive a1. And remember, you have negative here. So negative, positive, negative. So negative 2a1 plus 2a0 minus 2a1. Okay. So this is my uh, y double prime. Now, um, next thing is to take y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y. Okay. So I would have, this is 2y prime. If I want to, you 2y prime is going to be here and it's going to be 2 multiplied to this whole thing. Okay. And 3y, 3y should be this term right here. 3y is going to be 3 and multiply to this whole thing. And again, you said negative 3, negative 2, y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y double prime to see what's going to be. So my point is I want to have y double prime minus 2y prime minus 3y. It's going to, oh, 3y. It's going to be equals to So I will have, and as you as you can um, pay attention to, we always have e to the negative t uh, somewhere, right? E to the negative t here, e to the negative t, e to the negative t here. So at first, I want to group e to the negative t. And in this case, you will have, and I want to take um, t square term. I have t squared term here and I have t squared term here. Okay, so this is negative. Remember, you have negative 2, negative 3, and y double prime. So a, the so t squared, I have a 0 minus 
two times negative, negative two, negative, you have positive. So plus two a is zero, okay? And then negative three, positive. So it's negative three a zero. As you can see that this is gonna be gone. It's gonna be zero, okay? But just leave it there for now. Now go to the next term. You have t. So for t, I have negative 3a0 plus a1. And I have negative 2 times 2a0, two so negative 4a0. Negative 2 times negative 1a1, uh, one, so it's going to be positive 2a1. And then we'll go here, negative 3 times a1 is going to be negative 3a1. There's no a0 in here. Um, the second term, right? For the constant, constant I would choose, um, constant I have 2 a0 minus 2a1, okay? Then in the constant in the y prime I would have negative two a one. Okay, in the y I have negative three. There's no constant here. So I'm done with the constant. I'm done with the e to the negative t part. Okay, now we have to take care of b's. So on the y double prime, we don't have any b's. On the uh, y prime, we have negative two plus times b zero, negative two b zero. And on the uh, y, we have negative three b zero t. And then negative three um, b one. So if I want to uh, combine this and this two together, right? you have the t terms here, you have the constant terms here. Um, you can leave it like that for now. All right, so I combine all of this. So let's, now the next step is I want to simplify some of this. Simplifying will be always easy, uh, makes our lives easy. So one, two, negative three, so zero, right? So you have negative three, negative four, negative seven. T, negative seven, A zero. Okay, A one plus one, three, negative three is zero. So it's just negative A seven, zero. And on the constant you have two A zero minus four A one, okay. And then on the B's terms, you have negative three B zero T um, minus three B one minus two B zero. Okay, so I know this is the T terms and this is the constant term, constant term. All right, so the next step is we wanna force this side, the left side of the equation equals to the right side of the equation. So the left side of the equation is um, this, and then the right side will be negative 3t e to the negative t plus 4t. Double check, negative 3t e to the negative plus 4t, okay. Well, as you can see that, um, so t and t here are the same, right? And then negative should be, um, e to the t here and t. So from here, you can distribute it out. Just one second here. I need to do another step on this side. So I would say negative, so this is this gonna be a distributed in. So I would have negative seven a zero t e to the negative t plus 2a0 minus 4a1 times e to the negative t, okay. And I just move this down, negative 3b0t minus 3b1 minus 2b0, okay. 
equals to negative 3t e to the negative t plus 4t. Look at this equation. What do you notice? You would notice that I have this term on the right side here. And I have the same term t e to the negative t on the right side here. Okay, the, these are the only terms that are matching in the same um, function form. So this means 3t, right? This means t e to the negative t e to the negative, that means negative 7a0 equals to negative 3. That's one thing that we observe. Another thing is the t functions, the linear functions, there's only one linear functions here. That means negative 3b0 has to be equals to 4. Okay. So then we don't have any terms, either negative t by itself on the right side. So this has to be equals to 0. We don't have any constant term on the right side. So that means this has to be equals to 0. Okay. So more specifically, I can say that this 7, negative 7, 4, A0 should be equals to negative 3. And negative 3, B0 should be equals to 4. Okay. So from here, we have a system, right? We have, we still have some space here. Okay. So from what our observations, we know that negative 7a0 equals to negative 3. Okay. We know that negative 3b0 equals to 4. Okay. We also know that 2a0 minus 4a1 equals to 0. And we also know that the negative 3b1 minus 2b0 equals to 0. I just want to make sure that we have everything down correctly. Um, this is, so a0 is going to be 7 over 3 over 7, or b0 is just going to be, uh, and then you can figure out a1 and a0. Okay. Well, this, this four equation that we are, uh, we came up with in order to solve for A0, A1, B0, and B1, and so on and so forth, okay? So if A0, uh, from here, we know that A0 should be three over seven, okay? And from here, we can solve for A1 using A0. So A1 should be um, A0 over two, which is 3 over 7, 3 over 14. Okay. From here, we know that, oh, negative 3b0 should be, negative 3b0 should be equals to 4. See, this is equals to 4. So then from here, we know that b0 equals to 4, negative 4 over 3. And from here, we know that B1 equals to um, 3, 2, negative 2 over 3B0. So 3B1 equals negative B0. And goes over there. Okay. Then it's going to be uh, negative 2 over 3 times negative 4 over 3. So that's going to give you a over three. And this is here. Okay. So once you figure what is a zero, what is b zero, what is a one, what is e one, then you just need to plug this into. Um, so then from here, I finally found my yt, big yt, the sp specific solution to the non-homogeneous part. So it is um, a 
a zero three over seven t square plus three over fourteen t e to the negative t um, plus a over three t negative four over three t plus a over three okay remember this is just special specific solution to the non-homogeneous right the non-homogeneous part. And remember, in order to find the general solution, you need to find the solution to the homogeneous part. And we pre I'm pretty sure that everyone know how to find this part. So I, I let me call y zero t is a solution to the homogeneous part using two roots here. You have c1 e to the three t plus c2 e to the negative t. Okay, combine this together, I will have my general solutions as y. So if I add this to, so general solutions. y t equals to y zero t plus yt, and y0t is already found here, and yt is already found here, okay? As you know, and as you can see that, look at these two solutions here. Um, you have uh, a polynomial functions multiplied to a uh, exponential functions, right? And you have polynomial functions. And in this homo non-homogeneous, in this homogeneous solutions, you have just, exponential functions uh, with two different powers. So then all of these four, if, if you want to observe this general solutions, this four, so one functions, one functions, another function, another function, all these four functions are total, are different functions, they're not. They, they will span the whole entire solution set for this differential equation with these four different functions here. So here we go. Another case uh, of the general, of the non-homogeneous parts, like different functions for the non-homogeneous parts in which you can use the method of undetermined coefficient to solve this, this second differential equation. Again, the second case is when the non-homogeneous part is in this form. This is the form of a product of a polynomial functions and an exponential function. 